There you are. Hello and good evening. Everybody, warm welcome to Love Audio. Uh, if you're new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Paul Weber. Very good to be here. And uh, if you are new, don't forget to say hi in the comments and I'll introduce you to the regulars. And regulars, by the way, please make the newcomers feel very, very welcome indeed. Now, if you don't know what the channel is all about, basically I'm offering beginners in audio production a friendly, safe and fun platform on which to learn the basics together. Now, if you're on board with that, I'll tell you what, let's get into it, shall we? Great idea. All right, so tonight's show is going to be about um, characters, uh, character voices in particular. Um, as a voiceover artist myself, um, I often, or not often, but you know, now and again get asked to do uh, different accents, different dialects perhaps, um, a different character that the client wants to portray. And that's great because it gives you variety. Instead of just reading a flat script or anything like that, you actually bring the script to life by bringing a bit of character into uh, your production which is fantastic so we're going to be getting into that as well um i was hoping to have a guest of mine on tonight um a very very good voiceover artist who does a lot of character voices unfortunately he's uh, had another stream that was scheduled at half seven so that might not finish in time but uh, we are going to be looking at his uh, kind of showreel, if you will. I won't say any more than that for the time being. We will get into it very, very shortly. First of all, let me just say hi to some people. Hello to Tom and to Becky. Hello to you guys. Hello to Matt Huss, who's uh, listening and watching. Rich Vibes is in the house from Sunday night's Mixed Cloud, uh, the Sunday session. Well done, sir. Um, also, hi to Dan Woodward. Good evening from Dan and Adrian. And uh, so, let's have a look here. Matt says, video is not in sync with the audio. Perhaps it's just me. Video is a bit delayed. No, you're absolutely right. And I think it's because I'm using a green screen. <laughs> and, and I don't know how to add the delay to whichever thing I'm trying to delay. So, um, so maybe you can help with that. Um, but if you can hear me, then that's absolutely fine. And uh, just don't pay any attention to the lip sync. And, and we, should be, um, we should be perfectly fine with that, shouldn't we? Um, Sammy Superstar says, Matt is right. Absolutely. Rich Vibe says, no, no, it's out of sync. Yes, I know. That's what it says. That's what, that's what Matt said. Um, <laughs> video, video is not in sync with the audio. Perhaps it's just me. Hey, you know what? That's fine. I, I'm not a video uh, engineer. I haven't got a clue how to do the, uh, the delay, um, which is fine. And we'll just carry on regardless. How's that? Yeah. Uh, so, like I say, tonight's all about um, character voices. And um, the guest I was going to bring on has uh, been a British voiceover for many, many years, probably way, way more than I have. And I've been in radio and stuff like that for about 25, 30 years. Um, but Darren is um, a, a great master of different accents and he loves to do celebrity um, accents as well and uh, the name may be familiar particularly if you are in the UK because uh, Darren took part in Britain's Got Talent and actually got to the final uh, which is absolutely wonderful and uh, we're going to be taking a look at his audition so without further ado uh, let me do this for you first of all and uh, be completely brilliant absolutely brilliant uh, Darren Altman is his name and uh, yeah he's been a voiceover as I say for many many years and um, has done some voiceovers for me uh, as a commercial voiceover and um, yeah really really pleased and um, I'm just so sorry he couldn't join us on the call tonight he has said that he will come on on another stream though so uh, maybe in a couple of weeks time we can schedule something in uh, where Darren comes on and does some impressions for us that would be good wouldn't it would you like that now um, what I'd like to do is to ask you guys uh, what your favorite or what you can remember from your childhood perhaps your favorite cartoon drop it in the comments if you will let me know what your favorite cartoon was when you were you know this high perhaps um, and it'd be really interesting to find out which kind of characters you like the most I mean look, looking back into my childhood I guess I was watching things like um, uh, you know Penelope Pit Stop, Wacky Races that kind of stuff um, what's that Tasmanian Devil thing uh, Captain Caveman that was good uh, Captain Caveman 
again, you know, that kind of thing. And also, um, you know, things like Top Cat was really good. Oh, yeah, TC. Uh, all those kind of things. And so these are characters that are voiced by voiceover artists. They stand in a room, you know, a, a kind of a... a, a a booth, really, like the one behind the green screen, which you can't see, or behind the bookshelves, I should say. Do you like the new set, by the way? Yeah. Um, so these these are all characters that are that are voiced by professional voiceover artists, which is amazing. Um, Dan says, my mate Adrian sat with me, does a very good Frank Spencer. <laughs> I don't know about that, Betty. Uh, so yeah, good. We have to get him on. Um, Matt says Scooby Doo, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, Rich Vibe says Droopy. Uh, you can get tablets for that these days, Rich. Uh, get down your chemist. Um, and you don't need a prescription either, which is also pretty cool. Uh, Matt says Bugs Bunny. Yeah, what's up, Doc? That kind of thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, keep dropping it. Oh yeah, Matt says He-Man. You've got a little He-Man character, haven't you, on your set, which is pretty cool. Um, so really, really good to watch that uh, and uh, to see that coming into um, into action on your set. Which is pretty cool. And you bring him forward for a guest appearance sometimes, don't you? <laughs> which is uh, uh, which is pretty good. Now, um, as well as uh, kind of cartoon characters, don't forget a voiceover artist could uh, get into um, you know things like uh, celebrities, like like Darren was doing on that uh, on that clip, and that clip, of course, from Britain's Got Talent uh, when he got through to the final, which is absolutely brilliant. That was his first audition, by the way. So what a cracking first audition that was, wasn't it? Amazing stuff. So. Um, Let's just uh, show you this, actually. This is just a page from um, my website, which is loveaudio.co.uk. Um, Matt says, 80s, baby. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Got to be the 80s cartoons and stuff like that. Oh, I know what I was going to say. One of my favourite cartoons was um, Hong Kong Fui. And I used to love the bit where he kind of bounced off of a... I think it was an ironing board that came down out of the, out of the closet. And... Um, and, and, you know, jumped off of that and ended up in a filing cabinet and, you know, somebody would bang the uh, the filing cabinet and he'd come out of one of the drawers. It just It sticks in my mind that. It's one of the best cartoons I ever watched, <laughs> which is pretty cool. But anyway, uh, on to my website, Love Audio Production. Uh, this is uh, loveaudio.co.uk and we're on the voiceovers page here. Um, so I'm just going to scroll down. So voiceover artist, uh, I've been a voiceover for as many years, blah, blah, blah. You can read that yourself, can't you, in your own time, which is cool. Um Corporate voices, I won't, I won't bore you with that because we're not talking about corporate voices tonight. You can listen to that uh, until you're blue in the face, can't you? I've got dozens of scripts with corporate stuff on it, uh, which is fine. And then you've got commercials, so various um, commercials that I've voiced for radio stations across the country. Um, Hong Kong Fui for the win, absolutely, Matt. I totally agree with you on that one. <laughs> um, but then let's scroll down to this third one. This is characters, so... Um, just a few of the many guys, as it says here, uh, that I've had to perform over the years. If you can think of a character, we're sure that Paul can turn his hand, or in this case, his voice, to it. Well, I don't know about that, but have a quick listen to some of these that I put together for this particular demo. Have a listen to this. Here we are. Hello, me buddy. Over you. I'm all right. I just milk Daisy and I'll be off down the precinct directly. All right, Pat. I'm gone doing the tour with the lads for a pint. I say, oh boy, spent thousands and thousands of pints on Brian Trousers for my forthcoming visit to the nice high, swat. You plonker, Dave. It's not your deodorant that's the problem, it's your B.O., isn't it? Ah, it is beautiful, see? <laughs> Turkeys. Now, what happened was, young man of this, you catch the train down to Camborne, but mind it, don't go full tash on Wednesday. Oh, well, you take the high road, and I'll take the low road, and we'll both be there by sundown, or we're all doomed, laddie. Super duper bang bang, yes, indeedy, so it is. Steve, say what you see. I'll give you five seconds of the ready money round. Here we go. Ah, bonjour, my little English germs. How are you? What are you looking at? My lot of hair. Absolutely, Miss Money Bunny. Quick, in here. This restaurant only sells martini. Shake them, not stirred. I, say I, might I don't bloody well believe it. Right, no, Sybil, you stay there. I'll answer it. So, yeah, just a selection of, um, of characters that I've uh, put together for the demo. Um, some of those featured on uh, some commercials. And, um, yeah, quite proud of that. But it was 
quite some time ago, probably 10, 15 years ago, some of those were on the uh, commercials, but um, all pretty good. So character voices can can take on many forms. We've talked about cartoons in the... Uh, uh, in the uh, the chat there, which is pretty cool. A lot, a lot of selections there. He-Man, of course, uh, was from Matt. Scooby-Doo as well. Hong Kong Fooey. We mentioned Bugs Bunny. All that kind of thing. All of these voices are voiced by mainly Mel Blanc <laughs> uh, in America. But, you know, a lot of them are done by other artists as well, which is pretty cool. And you'll see that, you know, if you watch a cartoon all the way through, the list of characters and the list of people taking part and, you know, the, the designers and all that kind of stuff, it just goes on forever. Um, but you get an idea of who is uh, responsible for kind of voicing those uh, commercials and sorry, not those commercials, but those voices on those um, uh, cartoons. Um, OK, so we've done we've done kind of cartoon characters. What about film characters? Who is your favorite actor or actress uh, in a film? Or maybe you can name the film. Maybe that would be an easier thing and we can try and deduct uh, who is the main character, the main star of that film. Just let me know in the comments what your favourite film is um, of all time. So we're going back, you know, maybe even 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s perhaps. Um, which particular film do you like or have liked in the past? And one of those that you kind of... If it comes on the TV just because it's on the schedule, then you'll sit there and watch it, even though you've watched it 20 times. Um, ah, Sean Connery shares Christina. Absolutely, Mish Money Penny. Quick, in here. Uh, so that's pretty easy. That's a, that's a kind of Scottish boy, voice, but he kind of he growls, you know, he does this kind of thing with his, with his mouth on one side. He probably doesn't do that in real life, but, you know, it, it's kind of what impressionists do in order to uh, to get that voice correct. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look here. That's, that's Christina's guess. Tom says Harry Potter. Uh, I can't do Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter. No, I can't. I, I, no, I can't do Harry I mean, you know... You, you could you could do, I suppose, if you practiced enough. And that's the idea, is that, you know, these voiceover artists probably stand in the mirror and practice and practice and practice. Who have we got here? Alan Rickman. Yeah, you see, Alan Rickman's very, very kind of softly spoken, isn't he? But, um, you know, Potter, get back to your quarters or I'll... Etc. Etc. That kind of thing. So he's and he's a very t kind of tall character. And, and because he's tall, he's got this kind of deep cavernous chest and where that kind of voice comes from but it's really kind of deep and resonant but it's very softly spoken i think um so that's pretty cool anybody else uh, let us know in the comments which your favorite uh, your favorite film character could be um and we'll have a go at that i once <laughs> i once interviewed uh, the boxer the british boxer frank bruno which uh, and he's got a really deep voice i can't go as deep as he can um but it was like, ho, 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 ho. do you know what I mean? And like, because he's so tall, uh, I was interviewing him and, and I'm only five, seven and he's about seven foot or something like that, six foot something. And, and I'm like up here with the microphone because that's the only way I could make him, you know, speak into the mic properly. And then down to me to, uh, to do the next bit and ask the next question and then up to him like that and then down like that. It was so cool. Ah, Christina says, Vincent Price. Vincent Price. Oh, yes. Very good indeed, Christina. I like that. Um, Christina says, Tim Curry as well. Yeah. Uh, Tim Curry was in one of the um, uh, one of the Home Alone movies, wasn't he? I'm sure he was. Something like that, perhaps. Um, yeah, so uh, Tim Curry's good. Uh, Alan Rickman, we've got Vincent Price, Harry Potter, Sean Connery. I think it's probably the only one I can do is Sean Connery, to be fair. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty cool. So, character voices. Um, I've actually uh, did, uh, submitted a demo for a book to be narrated. Um, so I'm going to be narrating a book, and um, they've actually... Who's that? Christina says, Peter Lore. Peter Lore or Peter Law? Um, Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, I love that, Tom. Thank you. Um, I don't know who Peter Law is, Christina. Um, I probably like Luria. My, my pop culture knowledge isn't that brilliant, to be fair. Uh, Hannibal Lecter, so. And um, uh, I'm going to eat his liver with a nice bottle of Chianti. That's his kind of line, isn't it? I love that. Clarissa, I can smell your Chianti is the word you're looking for, Paul. Um, yeah, so look, going back to uh, this particular project, I've submitted a, a demo for narrating a book. Um, the author of the book has based it on a hotel which is literally two miles in that direction, 
um, in Sholden, which is the next village. So that's pretty cool. And he was searching for voiceovers and wanted one that was local to that area. And bingo. Hence the website. You see, you've got to have a website, guys. You have got to have a website. Um, if you're looking to promote yourself, it's the only way. And so I did this demo. I just read basically the first chapter, um, which did take me quite a while. It was about an eight minute demo, I think, altogether. Maybe a bit more than that, maybe 10 minutes or so. But anyway, read the whole thing through, brought some characters to life. And I had a the most beautiful letter uh, back from uh, the author's wife, who's going to be editing it. Uh, and also she publishes it as well, which is really cool. And and she was just so made up with hearing those characters come to life for the first time. It's all very well reading it off the page and you read it in your head and you think to yourself, I wonder what that character sounds like or even looks like. And then to hear somebody narrate it and have it brought to life was, for me, it was, it was the first one I'd ever done. So um, it was a new thing for me, but for them... Uh, because then um, her husband was away working in Italy, I think, and he came back and he again wrote me another superb, uh, you know, I can't tell you the the, the, uh, the the email that I got. It's just amazing. And he says, it's absolutely amazing to hear those characters come to life. Um, we definitely want to go ahead. So that's really cool. So I'm going to be narrating a book. And the good thing about that is it's part of a trilogy. So there's three of them to do, right? So um, I'm looking forward to doing that. But as part of the next stage to move forward, because they're going to be a few weeks before everything kicks off, but the, the next stage I've got to get to is um, one of the particular characters in this, uh, in this book is South African. Now, apparently South African accent is kind of a clipped version of, a, of a, an Australian accent. But it's very much it, it's very very clipped you know so you're talking a bit like this and you know this is the kind of accent that you're looking at uh, for south african particularly uh, but you know this particular character is is very very hot-headed he's a um, he's a hotelier he owns the hotel across the water there and he also is um it, it gets into wheeling and dealing, so he's got a lot of uh, anger, a lot of pent-up angst and anger in him. So he's going to be a bit violent at times, he's going to be a bit loud, so you have to kind of back off the mic. And um, I talked a little bit about gain staging, I think, in the description of this video. And, and gain staging, really, all it means is, if you are going to project your voice louder, take a few steps back because you're going to be louder, but it's still the same kind of volume, yeah? But if you want to be, if you want to draw people in, the idea is that you, you know, you, you talk very quietly and very softly into the microphone and you bring people closer. Come on, just move a little closer. Just closer than that. Can you hear me now? And almost down to a whisper. But the idea is that if you have a decent microphone, every single whisper you can also hear as well, which creates mystery, intrigue. Wizardry. Wizardry! Potter! Using sound effects, of course, is a really good way of bringing a character to life. <laughs> um, but you get the idea. So, yeah, really pleased. Uh, Christina says, congrats. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, so really looking forward to kind of getting my teeth into that and um, doing this next stage of the demo, which is they actually want to hear the South African's um, uh, character uh, come to life and they want me to read it in, in context. So uh, tomorrow's little project for me is to um, print off because I can't, I, I can't read it on a screen. It's just, it, it, it's, it's just not. It, when I'm, when I'm reading a script, I need it in paper and I need it in front of me because uh, I'm going to be doing it in the booth and sat down doing it as well because it's quite a long script. I don't want to be stood up for an hour doing it. So um, I'm going to be sat down on a high stool, but I want the script right in front of me on paper. So I'm going to print that off, but I'm only going to be doing the, the kind of two or three, maybe four pages of this particular South African character. Um, you know, coming to life, if, if you if you will. And hopefully I pick a good bit out there that kind of reflects both of these this guy's moods because he's he's a he's a pleasant hotelier. Well, not pleasant, but he's, you know, people tolerate him. 
as a hotelier. But then he's got this dark side where he gets into the, you know, the, the underworld, as it were. And I won't tell you the plot, but, I, you know, once things come to fruition, we'll, we'll publish some bits and pieces on here uh, on the live stream on a Monday night. And you'll be able to get to get to grips with the story, as it were. So, um, yeah, hopefully that's um, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> Rich says you've been spending too much time in the studio alone, Paul. You're absolutely right. <laughs> uh, nearly nine months now, isn't it? Uh, but you know what? I enjoy doing it and it's good fun. Rich, that's why you've built your studio at home, because you enjoy doing what you're doing. And um, yeah, you're very needy about the mug. The mug's got to come from uh, America, so you're going to have to be patient. Plus, I've got to buy it. So uh, yeah, keep your air on. Everybody's getting mugs for Christmas, by the way, because that's all I can afford. Um, <laughs> or T-shirts, in fact. <laughs> We're sporting a T-shirt tonight. So um, yeah, teespring.com forward slash love audios merch store. I think that's what it is with the hyphens in between. But just search for Love Audio, you'll find it. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, that's um, that's pretty much it on the characters front. I wanted to kind of go over that, and, and I'm really pleased that um, that Darren's agreed to come on to a future stream and do some character voices for us. That'll be really good, won't it? Um, so really looking forward to that. Uh, listen, guys, thanks so much for joining me today. Bit of a shorter stream, I get that, but um, hope you've enjoyed yourselves. And um, please do, you know, drop a comment in there if you'd like other things featured in future streams. Love to be able to hear from you uh, with regards to that. Tell you what we haven't done yet is this. It's the Jingle of the Week. <laughs> That's got to be the cheesy. And it does, look, the trigger doesn't work. The trigger does not work. Hang on, hang on. Uh, where are we going here with this? The mouse is stuck. Is the mouse stuck there? Okay, hang on, hang on. Stay there. There we go. All right, there we go. Um, so, yeah, jingle of the week. I need to get that trigger fixed, don't I? But we'll do that later. Um, what I'm going to do is play you a video. Um, this is from Jam Creative Productions in Dallas, Texas, and that's the company we feature on uh, the Jingle of the Week. Um, it's where I have my jingles done. As you know, you've heard those a dozen times um, on the, um, the stingers that we have, the intro and outro, for instance, like this. That should fade back to camera now. Yes, it does. Good. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm going to play you this um, this particular video. Uh, do that. Uh, not that, because I've just double clicked on it. Hang on a second. Uh, restart that. Do that. That's not the right one anyway. I'm, I'm clicking the same thing. That's why I can't find it. Okay. Don't panic. Don't panic. Whatever you do, don't panic. All right. Okay, so um, yeah, this is from Jam Creative Productions in Dallas. Uh, you'll find their website at jingles.com. Okay, www.jingles.com. The boss of the company is John Wolfert, and um, and his wife Mary Lynn. So John and Mary Lynn. So Jam is how they got the name. Uh, for the company way back in 1974. They've been producing jingles ever since. They've done some fantastic jingles for radio stations in this country and particularly in America. This one I'm going to play you is a jingle from America. This particular video I'm going to show you is 5 minutes and 21 seconds, but do come back and we'll say cheerio after that. Okay, so without further ado, let me hand over to John Wolford. Here we go. Welcome to Jam Creative Productions, where we're about to start work on a new jingle package. So while the musicians are getting ready, let me tell you a little bit about it. Today's client is WABC in New York City, and they asked for jingles to reflect the bigness of New York and the radio station, a big orchestral sound. So who better to work with on this than the one and only Tom Merriman? Let's follow the progress of one cut from this new package. We call it WABC number 121. It's the top of the hour ID, the jingle that's heard at the beginning of every hour leading into the news. We start with the rhythm section. It takes most of a day to lay down the rhythm tracks for an entire package, and on another day, we add the brass.
Now it's another day and it's time to add strings to the package, in this case six violins and a cello. At this point, the track is full enough to sing along with, so it's time for the vocal session. News Talk Radio 77, WABC, New York City. Over the course of the next few days, we add many more instruments to the recording. Everything from percussion, to harp, and to make the jingle sound big and proud, we add four French horn parts. Well, after all those days of recording, we finally arrived at the last step. This is the mix down, and this is where we determine what this jingle is really going to sound like forever and ever. You know, if you add together all of the musicians and singers that we used and take into account the layers we recorded, there's over 60 people performing on this jingle. Each of those items was recorded on a separate track. Each track appears on a separate channel of the recording console. So you have complete control over how loud everything is, how much echo it has, what kind of echo, any other effect you want to put on it. It takes a long time, but when it's done, it's done. And hopefully it's really good. After the mix, we master the jingles to CD and send it to New York City. And that's really where the last part of the story takes place, when WABC listeners hear the jingle on the air. 12:30106. Reaching more American than any other News Talk Radio station in the nation. News Talk Radio 77, WABC, New York City. In the greatest city in the world, it's 5 o'clock. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston, the man accidentally shot by Vice President Dick Cheney. Over the A station like WABC really needs to have a great jingle company. Jingles are really important to what we do and uh, Jam does a great job of capturing that sound that made WABC so special back in the 60s and 70s and we think it's important to continue that sound today. So we've been using Jam for 30 years and I can't imagine what it would sound like without a Jam jingle. So the next time you hear WABC number 121, picture it this way. There we go. So uh, my thanks to John Wolfert and uh, uh, Brian Hamilton, of course, and also thanks to Phil Boyce and Johnny Donovan uh, from the radio station, of course, WABC. And uh, that was 2006. So, um, yeah, they've come a long way since then, of course, making more jingles for them, no doubt, over the years. So, listen, I want to thank Jam Creative Productions very much for their uh, video clip that's on YouTube, of course. You can see that at any time. Uh, just search for Jam Creative. And um, also thanks to Darren Altman for uh, allowing us to, uh, to preview his, um, his fantastic demo for the Britain's Got Talent show. Uh, my name is Paul Webber. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you've not already done so, make sure you subscribe, but also click that bell because that will then let you know when things are coming up in the future. We normally go live each and every Monday night at 8 p.m. UK time, which is 3 p.m. Eastern, and I think 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, but you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong on that one. All right. Uh, so that's pretty much it from me, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure as always. And I look forward to seeing you on the next stream. Take care now. Bye-bye. <laughs>